some more with the Know Nothing Riots, 1855 here in Louisville, Kentucky. The anti-foreign, anti-Catholic, anti-Irish, anti-German riots um, by the white Americans, the white Anglo-Saxon Protestants, the WASP. The WASP are anti-Catholic and anti-German uh, and Irish. WASP is, is Protestants and Baptists are Protestants, so there's a Baptist kind of versus Catholics type thing going on there. They're both Christians, right? They all they both believe in Jesus, do unto others, you have them do unto you, the golden rule. Turn the other cheek and love your enemy unless they're a different type of Christian than you, and then you attack them, just like you did in 1855. Right, yeah, that's great, Baptist. Real, real great, real great morals there. Nice, nice, consistent morals. So, um, before I go back into it, we're in the uh, Irish area. There's two... Uh, I guess two separate riots. There was one that happened in Germantown and Butchertown uh, on the east end, and then there was one that happened in the west end against the Irish. But I wanted to, I'm um, getting this off of Brian'sBush.com. So, a website, Brian'sBush.com. I only got two more uh, paragraphs to read, but before I finish it, I kind of want to read the Louisville Encyclopedia of Louisville what they had on the Know Nothing riots, because I think there might be some overlap, but I believe that we'll learn through the overlap. So, from the encyclopedia. Here we go. Know Nothing Party. In the early 1850s, a third political party emerged as a powerful influence, upsetting the two-party system of Whigs and Democrats firmly entrenched in American politics. The tremendous influx of predominantly Catholic, Irish, and German immigrants beginning in 1846 gave rise to strong anti-foreign, anti-Catholic sentiment. Some native-born Americans perceived the rush of foreigners as a threat to undermine Americanism and open the door for a papal takeover of the country. The hysteria associated with this xenophobia gave birth to the American Party, whose members were commonly known as uh, commonly called Know Nothings. The so-called nativist movement of the white Americans that eventually gelled into the Know Nothing American Party began around 1850. Originally known as the Order of the Star-Spangled Banner, so they called themselves the Order of the Star-Spangled Banner. Um, later, the Order of the United Americans. In New York and the Order of the Sons of America in Pennsylvania, these societies formed secret lodges throughout the Union. Only native-born Protestant male citizens with Protestant parents and not joined by marriage to a Roman Catholic could join a lodge. So these lodges and these secret societies throughout the Union, only native-born Protestant male citizens were allowed to join. If you're married to a Roman Catholic, you cannot join. Members used cryptic hand signals and passwords, and they swore an oath never to divulge the activities of the party meetings. If outsiders questioned them, members replied, I know nothing. When Whig Party leaders Henry Clay and Daniel Webster died a few months apart in 1852, that party began to disintegrate, badly split over the slavery issue. So Daniel Webster and Henry Clay were major Whigs. Henry Clay was out of Kentucky. He's uh, the quote I like that he said that he'd rather be pri he'd rather be right than to be president, and and he was he was right, but he never got to be president. So I guess that teaches anybody who wants to get into politics to learn how to lie. <laughs> yeah. Rand Paul bullshitted his way in the office, so um, outright lying isn't good. But was it George Costanza? If you believe it, then it's not a lie. So like Mitt Romney, he could say that he's for abortion, he's against abortion, and as long as he believes it, then it's not a lie. So... The Whig parties beginning to disintegrate in 1852. Generally, northern Whigs were anti-slavery, and they joined the fledging Know Nothing Party due in large part to its stance against Catholic immigrants who were at the time inundating the northeast United States. The southern faction of, of Whigs supported the nativist movement in part because of the massive numbers of immigrants in the north increased the population and gave the north more representation in Congress, where they could outvote the south. Each faction had definite views on the free slave status of the new states, but let the issue remain unresolved, choosing to ride the unifying wave of strong anti-foreign fever that was a welcome diversion, diversion from the slavery issue. So anti-immigration was a, a diversion from the slavery issue, but it seems like it's 
preying on the exact same hatred of the other, of somebody that's different than you. So if they didn't hate the black folks, then it was okay to hate the, the Germans. They could all agree on hating the immigrants. They couldn't agree on hating the black folks, but they could all agree on hating the German-Irish Catholics. So, um, Southern faction of Whigs supported the nativist movement in part because of the massive numbers. Each faction had definite views. Uh, though the party never officially advocated violence, its vehement uh, xenophobic rhetoric, vehement xenophobic rhetoric gave rise to the use of thugs to control elections. The best known of these were the Plug Uglies. The Plug Uglies, who organized in several cities to prevent foreigners from going to the polls. In 1854-55, the stunning know-nothing success resulted in 100 congressional seats, eight governorships, and thousands of local offices. So in the 1850s, no nothings are gaining uh, a lot of strength based on their hatred of the foreigner, of the immigrants. The no nothings are gaining a lot of strength. They got 100 congressional seats, eight governors, thousands of local offices, and they use the plug uglies, the the plug uglies, right, to uh, as thugs to keep people from voting. By 1854, Louisville was fruitful ground for the growing hatred of non-Americans. German and Irish immigrants flooded into the city. Many Irish were poor and illiterate, and according to the Know Nothings, owed blind allegiance to the Pope. So the Know Nothings said that they all, all the Irish and the Germans, were blindly obedient to whatever the Pope had said. So whatever Pope Benedict or whoever the Pope was back then, if you're Irish or German, then you're just supposed to listen to him, right? Which is ironic since the Germans are also radicals, so they were against oppression and uh, the militarism of Germany. So uh, I think they just they just didn't like the foreigners. They just didn't like the the, the German slash Mexicans. The Germans who were like the Mexicans. You know, I could totally see the same white American who says, "Those Mexicans are taking our jobs. They should learn our language and they should integrate and assimilate with us." Saying the exact same thing to the Germans. The Germans need to learn our language. And and what's funny though, when you say Germans need to learn our language. Uh, English is a Germanic language, uh, but also German language comes from Germany, English comes from England, Spanish comes from Spain. So for any American to say that they're speaking like true blue English, like Oxford University, English, and actually <laughs> it's usually the hillbillies that are saying, you need to speak English if you're going <laughs> to, that's my hill, you, you need to speak English if you're going to. That is not, I, I have to work on that so I can do it on demand. But, uh, <laughs> hillbillies, they are the ones who are loudest about speaking English in our country. You're going to come to our country, then you need to speak English. You need to learn how to speak our language if you're going to be speaking our country. If you're going to speak our country, you need to be speaking our language. Your language, your language is, uh, is from England, huh? Why do you say ain't? Where did ain't come from? They ain't in Oxford. Where's y'all? Where'd y'all come from? Mm, taters? What the hell is a tater? I've never seen a tater. So, uh, like, I get what you're saying, but you're 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 changing the words, uh, just like uh, some black folks do with with ebonics. So I see I see lots of similarities between black folks and and hillbillies. If they could unite, they could they could really go places. But it's kind of I don't know. Hoping that Nazis and Jews would get get along. So, okay, no nothing riots. Uh, by 1854, Louisville was fruitful ground for the growing hatred of non-Americans. German and Irish immigrants flooded into the city. Many Irish were poor and illiterate, and according to the no nothings, it owed blind uh, lead obedience to the Pope. A greater concern was that the Irish were almost unanimously flocking to the Democratic Party. So all the Irish were turning into Democrats, so that pissed off the Republicans and the people who wanted uh, uh, new voters for their party. Uh, this fueled the former, or the Whigs, the Whigs were afraid. This fueled the former Whigs' fear of a shift in the balance of power. Equally frightening were the German 48ers who escaped political oppression in Germany, followed the failed revolutions of 1848. Members of this foreign element were generally educated, intellectual, politically active, and inclined to express their radical ideas in print. 
A few of these radicals formed the League of Free Men in Louisville and espoused their views in the Louisville Platform of 1854. This document called for women's rights and emancipation of slaves, among other issues. So not just the women's right to vote, but women's rights and emancipation of slaves and abolition of slavery. The document called for women's rights and emancipation of slaves, among other issues. The platform incensed Louisville Whig American Party members and fueled the violent fires of Know Nothingism. Inner former Whig Walter Haldeman, editor of the Louisville Daily Courier, who had advocated nativist thinking for many years. His daily written railings against foreigners inflamed native born Americans to a white hot, a white hot anger as city elections approached. So the Louisville Daily Courier, the Whig, Walter Haldeman, is spreading a bunch of hatred. And then you have Haldeman's rival. What? Against foreigners, his daily against foreigners inflamed. No, so uh, Whig, Walter Haldeman, and they were rivals, George Prentice, but they both, both of the Cur Daily Courier and the Daily Journal, were hating themselves from foreigners, hating the Germans, hating the Irish. So Haldeman's rival, George Prentice of the Louisville Daily Journal, also took up the banner of Louisville's Know Nothings. In part, it was an act of survival. That's what they say. That's just some apologist bullshit. Prentice's beloved Whig Party had breathed its last, and its newspaper circulation was in decline. Prentice took up his pen against foreigners and Catholics with a venom, with a venom that exceeded even Haldeman's rhetoric. At one point, railing against the Pope as an Italian despot who sent forth hordes of Catholic immigrants to take over the country and to do his bidding. So they're sending, the, the, the Pope is just an Italian despot, an Italian dictator, and he sent forth hordes of Catholic immigrants to take over the country just to do the Pope's bidding. So watch out for the Pope. The Pope's trying to control Americans. In question, that spring of 1855 was the debate over the election of over the mayor, James Speed, elected in 1852, contended his term lasted until 1856. The Know Nothing dominated city council disagreed. So he thought he was going to have um, a longer term. James Speed thought he was going to have a longer term, but the Know Nothing dominated city council. So the city council was dominated by a bunch of Know Nothings. Disagreed. They called for an election and they declared John Barbie the American pre Party candidate. So it was the American Party. And John Barbie was their guy. John Barbie versus James Speed. Though Speed was an able mayor, he had one deplorable fault, unspoken by council members, but most likely the, uh, the cause for their actions. Speed was a convert to Catholicism. So John Barbie won the election held on April 7th, and Speed filed suit. The judge ruled in Speed's favor, but the know-nothings took the matter to the Kentucky Court of Appeals, which declared Barbie the winner. No nothings also dominated the magistrate elections held that May as ruffians beat Germans and Irish who attempted to vote. As ruffians, so white Americans, WASP, Protestants, Anglo-Saxon Protestant white people, violently going to the polls, and they beat uh, Germans and Irish. The violence dismayed even Walter Haldeman, who backed off his fervent nativist stance. He completely abandoned no nothingism at the American Party Convention in June 1855, wavered on the slavery issue. The debate over the free and slave balance that brought the downfall of the Whigs now threatened the American Party. As tempers grew hotter with the sultry summer days of 1855, a showdown was inevitable. On state election day, August 6, 1855, the minor skirmishes that had taken place all summer culminated in the Bloody Monday riots that claimed the lives of at least 22 people. Now, according to Martin Spalding, Bishop Martin Spalding, he said that over a hundred immigrants were killed, murdered, burned, beaten, maimed uh, on August 6, 1855. So they are at least saying at least 22, but he claimed more than 22. He said over a hundred. There may have been more victims, but an official inquiry was never conducted amidst the frenzy of finger pointing that followed. The American Party swept the election statewide. Bloody Monday was the climactic and defining moment for no nothingism in Louisville. The nativist movement temporarily diverted attention from the seething slavery issue, but it was a matter that could not be ignored, and its presence was obvious uh, within the party. So I got a few more paragraphs on this to read. A little bit more no nothingism. 
and the barbarity of the white Protestant Anglo-Saxon wasp Baptist so-called Native Americans even though the the Cherokee and the Shawnee and the Uchi and the Creek Indians and uh, the Skipikitiki they were the the true Native Americans of America I guess anybody born in this land is Native Americans today since we're a nation of immigrants <laughs>